Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week, we're gonna be looking at how to use the pull-up exercise to maximize development of the back muscles. So with the pull-up, we're gonna be primarily targeting the lats, rhomboids, and teres muscles through shoulder adduction, basically bringing your arm down to your side. The brachialis, biceps, and brachioradialis muscles will contribute to elbow flexion, or bending your elbow, while the lower traps will enforce scapular depression. The rectus abdominis, or abs, will also be active in the pull-up, as they'll be responsible for creating a spinal flexion isometric contraction, basically preventing the spine from bending backward throughout the range of motion. So before we dive into it with the execution, First, let's just cover why the pull-up is such a great exercise to begin with. Pull-ups target more total musculature than lat pull-downs. In 2013, Doma and colleagues found no significant differences in lat activation between a pull-down and a pull-up. However, the pull-up came out on top for the biceps and the spinal erectors, which run all the way up the back. Pull-ups also provide a very powerful overloading stimulus while many people think of the pull-up as a body weight only exercise, incrementally adding external load to the pull-up will strengthen all of the pulling muscles and lead to their growth through progressive overload. Pull-ups are also gonna be more effective at targeting the teres major and minor muscles than chin-ups or rows, which are primarily shoulder extension based. So I generally recommend loading the pull-up in a lower, heavier rep zone, something like five to 10 reps, since its potential for overload is very high. As a high-end strength standard at the elite level, it's quite common to see trainees performing pull-ups with body weight plus upwards of 100 pounds of extra resistance. One thing to emphasize from the outset, however, is that like with all exercises, uh, you really wanna master perfect technique through a full range of motion first before adding any load. For many people, body weight alone will have you close to failure in the five to 10 rep zone, while for others, assistance may be required to reach even five reps. And if this applies to you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using an assisted pull-up machine to reduce the load while you master the technique. But the goal here being to progressively reduce the machine's assistance over time, eventually reaching five reps with body weight. From there, you wanna add reps until you reach 10 reps with body weight, and then begin to apply extra load using a weighted belt or by having a training partner place a dumbbell between your legs. Find a straight bar or a bar with a kink in it that is ideally high enough so you can hang from it without having your feet touch the ground. Now, rather than jumping up to grab the bar, which can lead to uneven or inconsistent grip width and issues with loading, you should use a bench or aerobic riser placed one to two feet behind the bar to get you up to the right height. This way, when you do take your grip, you don't need to worry about your feet hitting the bench on the way down. You wanna grab the bar with a pronated double overhand grip at roughly 1.5 times shoulder width, or you can make a 90 degree angle with your upper arm and forearm, and then lift your arms straight up wherever your hands land should make for a good grip width. One 2016 study out of Massey University compared muscle activation in four pull-up variations and found no significant difference between all four, except that the pronated wide grip option was slightly better for the mid traps. So while there isn't necessarily anything wrong with using an underhand or narrow grip, they may cause the biceps to take over in some trainees. And going wider than 1.5 times shoulder width really is a bad idea as it's gonna reduce the range of motion, make loading more difficult, and more often than not, lead to wrist pain. I think the most important thing is to just be consistent with your grip for at least eight weeks. Keep everything the same and progressively get stronger by adding reps or adding weight without switching up the form. After eight weeks or so, now you can switch up the grip and hit things from a slightly different angle, repeating that same overloading process again. Now you can use lifting straps here, especially if they allow you to activate your back muscles better. However, I'd recommend doing at least one heavy back movement without straps so that your grip strength and forearm size aren't compromised. From a dead hang position, you wanna initiate the upward motion by depressing your shoulder blades. And you can use the cue to pull your elbows into your back pocket. At the same time, you wanna raise your chest up to point toward the bar, but don't exaggerate this cue to the point that the exercise starts to look like an inverted row. Just slightly puff the chest up. Continue to pull your elbows down and in until your elbows are as close to your sides as possible. As a minimum standard, you want to get your chin over the bar, which for most people means that your upper chest will actually touch the bar, ending the range of motion. Now throw out the concentric, you want to keep your hips extended to prevent kipping, basically bringing your legs forward or upward 
which is a way of cheating. You can either leave your legs dead straight or cross and tuck them in behind you. However, either way, you just wanna make sure that you're squeezing your glutes to keep the hips extended. After you reach the top, you wanna reverse the motion by lowering yourself back down under control, allowing your elbows to move up and out. Now, on the way down, you should feel your lats actively stretching, being pulled under tension. And to better feel the tension in your lats, you can think of pulling the bar apart on the concentric and the eccentric. Now, because I prefer heavier loading here with lower reps, I do think that using an external focus on just executing the movement will be best for most. However, if you're training with higher reps, now you certainly can get a tremendous amount of lat involvement out of the pull-up by squeezing and focusing on activating your lats. Uh, but certainly I would say both can be effective for really making the most out of the pull-up. So the most common error that I see here is just inadequate range of motion. Uh, it's really common to see trainees cut the range of motion short at both ends, not going all the way down on the eccentric and not going all the way up on the concentric. Now you don't have to go to a complete dead hang at the bottom. Now you can leave a slight bend in your elbows uh, however, you really should be going all the way up, leading with your chest and finishing each and every rep with your elbows pulled into your sides. If you're not able to get extra reps with a full range of motion, then you just shouldn't do them. Now, another very common error is lack of full body rigidity. Many people will just allow their torso and legs to become lax as reps start to get difficult, which can cause cheating and momentum. As I said, you wanna keep your glutes flexed, keep your hips extended, and don't allow your lower body to swing back and forth, creating excessive momentum. Everything should be solid and locked into place. Now I wanna quickly mention the wide grip lat pull down as an alternative here. You'll recall from earlier that while the pull-up may have a slight edge for the back overall, the pull-down shows virtually the same level of lat activation, making it a reasonable alternative, especially for beginners. Pull the elbows down and in, touching the bar to your upper chest, and allowing the lats to really stretch on the negative. However, I would caution against defaulting to the lat pull-down just because it's easier. Uh, you are sitting down here, so your core will be much less involved, and you don't wanna get into the habit of avoiding highly effective fundamental movements just because they're hard. In fact, I think it's the challenge of weightlifting that really makes it worthwhile. So that's all that I have for the pull-up guys. Um, as I said before, I'm gonna be leaving the whole entire Technique Tuesday series totally unsponsored, and I've got 28 episodes planned so far. Uh, each episode will usually take about 30 hours to produce. Um, so needless to say, this is a pretty big project. Um, so in the space here at the end of the video that would be normally occupied by an ad, I'm simply just gonna refer you guys to one of the training programs on my website. So that way, if you're enjoying the series or getting something out of it, uh, you can directly show your support for me and the work that I'm doing here while actually getting a product that's perfectly relevant to the content. Um, so for the launch of this video, I'm gonna be running a 30% off sale on my back hypertrophy program. Um, it's actually one of my better selling programs. Uh, the back is hit three days per week, two full workouts and one mini workout with pull-ups being performed on strength days and the supplemental day with cluster sets. Uh, so this is a really high volume program and the feedback on it has been amazing so far. Um, so if you'd like to check it out, you can get it for $13.99 on jeffnipper.com for the next week only. And I'll have that as the first link in the description. So I hope you guys all had a great Christmas. Uh, don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future Technique Tuesday episodes. And I'll see you guys all here on New Year's Day.